Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today the Church celebrates the second Tuesday in Advent, and we remember today St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas was born in the city of Patera, on a port on the Mediterranean Sea, to a wealthy family of Greek Christians. Nicholas' uncle was the bishop of the city of Myra, also, which is also in the Lycia area, and his uncle ordained him as a priest. After his parents died, Nicholas is said to have distributed their wealth to the poor. And Nicholas heard of a devout man who had once been wealthy but lost all of his money due to the plotting and envy of Satan. He could not afford proper dowries for his three daughters, which meant they would remain unmarried and probably, in the absence of other employment, at the time would have to become prostitutes. But so hearing of the plight of these poor girls, Nicholas decided to help them, but being ain't wanting to save them the humiliation of accepting charity, <coughs> excuse me, he went to the house under cover of night and threw a purse filled with gold coins through the window opening of the house. The father immediately arranged a marriage for his first daughter, and after her wedding, Nicholas threw a second bag of gold through the same window late at night. After the second daughter was married, the father stayed awake for at least two nights and caught St. Nicholas in the same act of charity toward the third daughter. The father fell on his knees, thanking him, and Nicholas ordered him not to tell anyone about the gifts. Also, Nicholas is said to have visited the Holy Land, and the ship he was on nearly was nearly destroyed by a terrible storm, but he rebuked the waves and caused the storm to subside. Another famous story about our friend St. Nicholas is from, comes from the Council of Nicaea. He, was, he attended the first Council of Nicaea in 325, and was a staunch opponent of Arianism and a devoted supporter of Trinitarianism. And he was also one of the bishops who signed the Nicene Creed, which we say in church. And during the Council of Nicaea, Nicholas lost his temper and slapped Arius across the face, thus supporting the truth against heresy. So St. Nicholas, for all your life and work and your death at 73 years of age, we ask you to please, please pray for us today. And so. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God, in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. say together the first form of the confidier found on page 66 if you're following along almighty father you know my deepest secrets i confess that i have through my own fault sinned against your holy laws in my thoughts in my words and what i have done or failed to do i sincerely regret my sins and i am truly sorry for offending you i ask father that in your mercy you pardon my sins i promise to change my way of living so that through a deeper holiness I may better serve you throughout the rest of my life. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to say to our fathers, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison. 
Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, send your Son once again to judge the secrets of the human heart. May we, who in holy fear await his coming as judge, joyfully regard him as our Savior. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! I answer, What shall I cry out? All flesh is grass, and all their glory like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower wilts, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. So then, the people is the grass. Though the grass withers and the flower wilts, the word of our God stands forever. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom, and leading the ewes with care. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, the Lord our God comes with power. The Lord our God comes with power. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Announce his salvation day after day. The Lord our God comes with power. Tell his glory among the nations, among all his peoples, his wondrous deeds. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. The Lord our God comes with power. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Let, then let all the trees of the forest rejoice. The Lord our God comes with power. They shall exult before the Lord, for he comes. For he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. The Lord our God comes with power. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The day of the Lord is near. Behold, he comes to save us. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh, my God, cleanse my heart and my lips. I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, What is your opinion? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, amen, I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over the ninety-nine that did not stray. In just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, leaving the 99 as a shepherd is not really seen as a wise and prudent thing. However, that is what Jesus says he's going to do. And one goes astray in the 99 stay. Well, what happens if the 99 go astray in one stays? That is where we are in our world today. What used to be Christian countries, they are now fastly devolving, rapidly devolving. A study a survey just came out in the last few days. It's very shocking, very shocking. England and Wales, England and Wales are now minority Christian countries. Now, this may or may not be shocking in and of itself. However, it's the first time that has happened since about the year 700 AD. So 1,400 years, my brothers and sisters, of Christianity in England and Wales is now rapidly devolving. The same is true throughout the West, that believers in Christ are decreasing very, very rapidly, which means more and more sheep are going astray. What does that mean, my brothers and sisters? Well, it means that we need to go out and look for the lost. Not just go after one, but the many. And bring them back to God. Bring them back to the truth. Because what is leading these sheep astray? What is leading them astray? Well, basically lies. Lies about the truth. Not only of the natural order, but the supernatural order. Now, I think we can all agree that 2 plus 2 equals 4. It can't equal anything else. It's, it just is. It's a mathematical truth. We know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. True. We see it every single day. Cannot be denied. However, there are certain natural truths that we are denying. There are more than two genders, some are saying. Many are saying. That marriage is not just between one man and one woman. That we can define who we are outside of God. And this had its genesis in denying, denying the natural truths. It has genesis in denying the supernatural truths. When we started to pick and choose what of Christ and the church teachings we wanted to follow, then it just began to fall. And kill babies up to the point of death, some cases even up to two years of age, with new laws that are coming out. We are fighting a war against a country that just ratified marriage is between one man and one woman, a proxy war in Ukraine, who since 2015 has instituted gay pride. My brothers and sisters, so many billions of people are astray now, not just one. Not just one. St. Nicholas, back in 325 at the Council of Nicaea, slapped Arius to stop the spread of his heresy. We still know about the Arian heresy today, but it's not really widespread. Well, it's gaining traction. 
in the world. But it stopped it. And we got the Nicene Creed that he signed. We, my brothers and sisters, have to be like Nicholas. Yes, in our generosity. Yes, in acting like what we call Santa Claus, which comes from Sankt Nikolaus, the German pronunciation of St. Nicholas. But more than that, more than that, we have to take St. Nicholas as our example and slap lies, slap heresy at the root. Because it's one thing to believe it, it's another to spread it. We just need to stop the spread and spread the truth of Jesus Christ and his church was always and everywhere been taught as Catholic. Brothers and sisters, we are at a point that is beyond the pall. We're fighting not for spread, but for survival of the faith in the world today. And we need to be careful who we support. We need to be careful who we follow. Right now, Lucifer has deceived billions on this planet. But let us not be deceived. Let us continue to pray the prayer of St. Michael. Let us continue to follow the example of St. Nicholas himself. And fight lies that take people away from God and their eternal inheritance promised for them. Because that is what is at the core of all of this, my brothers and sisters. Would we allow someone whom we love to squander their fortune for a little bit of pleasure? A little bit of pleasure to squander their eternal fortune? No. But that is what we are doing if we do not help those we love get away from their lives. They may listen, they may not, but we owe it to them to call them out. And we may lose them, that's their choice. Doesn't mean we still don't love them and want the best for them and the best is nothing more than or nothing less than eternal life. So let us go after the strays, not just one, the billions, and let us do what we can to help them come back. And when they do rejoice, rejoice more over it than anyone who stood with us the whole time. Because, because that means they have regained their inheritance that they themselves gave away. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In honor of St. Nicholas as a signer, let us say, say together the creed that unites us in, fa in, in faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, <coughs> eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we anticipate the coming of the Lord, let us turn to God with our needs, trusting in the one who gifted us with the Son so that we may live. And our response is, come Holy, 
Come, Lord Jesus, come. For Prime Bishop Anthony, Bishop Jerry, and all clergy, that they may continue to share Christ's constant and active presence in our midst through the gifts of his Spirit, we pray to the Lord, Come, Lord Jesus, come. For leaders of nations, that their actions may bear the fruit of Christ's peace, foster justice throughout the world, and follow the eternal teachings of the undivided church, we pray to the Lord, Come, Lord Jesus, come. For each of us here, the Advent will be an occasion for deepening our personal encounter with Jesus, especially in the sacrament of reconciliation. We pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For all who are ill, especially those on our parish prayer list, that we may find strength and consolation in their faith and in the help of their caregivers, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. The needs and intentions we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For all the lost sheep, that the Holy Spirit may touch them and help guide them home and touch us to help to be their earthly guides. We pray, that's Mass intention today. We pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For the dying and deceased, especially those who will die today, that they may be welcomed into the arms of Jesus. We pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. Father, we hear your call to repentance and rejoice that our salvation is near. Make our hearts and our world ready for the coming of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Then I called on the name of the Lord, O Lord, save my life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. For the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice, which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord, accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, for the benefit of his holy church. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the hope, joy, and peace you have given us and implore you to accept this oblation we now offer. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. For through the promised sending of Jesus Christ to earth for us, we revealed your goodness and unending love. Sharing in the hope of patriarchs and prophets, may we worthily prepare a dwelling place for the coming Messiah in our hearts. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice, the Mass continues with Eucharistic Prayer 3, which is found on page 84 if you're following along. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You have formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that, in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you. Through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Gracious God, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, the prisoner's freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and bless you. Together, we praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Feel its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Anthony, our prime bishop, Jerry, our bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people, and those who seek your truth, especially the lost sheep in our world today. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, whose faith is known to you alone, especially our friends and family members who have passed. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light, and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with our ancestors in faith, with the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Nicholas, whose memory we keep today, and with all the saints who found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. In the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ, bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Anus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Let's say together the First Communion Prayer found on page 97 if you're following along. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess the pure heart, that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. For I am the Lord your God, who grasp your right hand. It is I who say to you, Fear not, I will help you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you chose John the Baptist to, to call us to repentance and to announce the nearness of the kingdom. May we, whom your Son has gathered around his table, praise and glorify you and proclaim your name through before all the earth. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Join me now in prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. And where there's sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, 
is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us for our Holy Mass today. Please remember we will not be gathering tomorrow for Holy Mass, but we will be back on Thursday for the Solemnity of the Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Pray that you have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remain in the state of grace and fight evil wherever and whenever you find it. The King shall come when morning dawns and light triumphant breaks. When beauty gilds the eastern hills and life to joy awakes. Not as of old a little child to bear and fight and die. But when crowned glory like the sun that lights the morning sky. O oh, brighter than the rising morn, when Christ victorious rose, and left that lonesome place of death, despite the raging foes. O oh, brighter than that glorious morn, shall this fair morning be, when Christ our King in beauty comes, and we his face shall see.